All right, here we go with the second game between LMT and Game Geek 2 for the quarterfinals of the EB League tournament. So let's check check the matchup. So Game Geek now is playing highest down and LMT is playing the Apeiros. Uh compared to the previous matchup which was Arkeseleukeia and Pontus uh, which uh, which uh, LMT won, so he's up 1-0 in the series. In this case, uh, this isn't really anything historical, but rather it's uh, yeah, it's a, a totally unhistorical matchup. Of course, uh, Hayastan and the Epeiros didn't really meet in battle at any point. So King Geek is deploying here, while LMT is deploying here, so fairly close to each other. Let's take a look at the map first. Uh, I think the forests are in, going to play a role in this matchup because they are quite far away and they are going to deploy fairly close to each other. On the other hand, this small rocky formation may be uh, maybe playing some role. I think there's a funny angle that you can achieve by uh, standing up here. Yes, you can somehow look from from the top to the bottom when when you're up on this mountain, which is fairly convenient way to look at the map. If like your enemy is deploying here and and you're you, you want to have a broad overview. Okay, so as previously, uh, Game Geek has chosen a faction with access to cataphracts so I'm expecting to see some cataphracts at least one and these will probably prove to be a decisive uh, weapon in his army while on the other hand Epeiros do not have access to such a, a heavy cavalry so on the other hand, but but on the other hand, the the stamina of the Eperos cavalry is a lot higher and a lot better than uh, than cataphracts. So we are going to expect probably uh, more charges to be executed by the Eperos. But uh, the point is that if the uh, highest end player, which is Game Geek, can execute well-timed and well-aimed charges with his cataphracts then they will prove decisive and they will absolutely crush any opposition while on the other hand if LMT may be able to stop, intercept or avoid completely those charges and kill off the cataphracts uh, by means of slow attrition or charges by his own faster and more resilient cavalry could be a good point. Let's take a look at the armies now since the players finished their deployment. Now let's start from Game Geek which I suppose has the advantage in uh, the missile duel two units of Toxotai Syriakoi which as I said in the previous game tend to be on the heavy side of the spectrum so they're quite good in missile duels especially due to the shields and their armor two units of step horse archers and one unit of Caucasian foot archers as a reserve this guy sneezed by the way and this is a kind of a signature move by Game Geek. He 
uh, very often buys uh, Caucasian horse arch uh, foot archers and keeps them in reserve in order to find good angles to shoot at the enemy army. And this is very, this is also typical of his playstyle, taking a light axeman unit with lots of javelins as a reserve to back up his main offense. To his main offensive, actually, the offense is something else, I guess. Okay. Yeah, since I'm also participating at this battle, <coughs> I uh, I need to be on the field with a, at least one unit. So that's why I'm I'm running away because it's, uh, in order not to interfere with the proper battle. Let's take a look at his main line. I guess four Pantodapoi. Yes, four Panto da Poi Phalangitai, which are the lowest level of phalanxes, but they are so many it doesn't really matter. You see those porcupine-like formations, porcupine-looking line with the Sarisai forming a sea of spears or a sea of pikes, uh, able to block arrows according to ancient historians and writers. Four, are they four? Yeah, four unit, four units of Strakir Martikner. These are um, the uh, Armenian heavy infantry, which are yeah kind of strong, uh, even if they have short sword, short swords, which are. Uh, not as lethal as long swords, of course. And these guys are, yeah, these are. Uh, uh, how are they called? Jewish spearmen. The. Oh, I, s I, I also saw them in the previous game. These are the. Judayoi Taxis, that's the name. Medium spearmen. Not really great, anyway, but they're decent. They can hold the line, they can fight cavalry. Their only problem is the small shield. That's their only big disadvantage. Anyway, uh, cataphract general bodyguard and uh, two medium axe cavalry units. One, two. Are they the full 20 units? 8, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. I see 19, I count 19 units. So maybe there's actually a hidden unit in this forest. Let's take a look at what's happening here. Ah, the classic horse archer bait. Run very close. To a cavalry, to an enemy cavalry unit, and uh, and bait them, bait them to come and follow you. And these are Thrakioipes, I think. They're actually decent units, but I don't think that leaving them in pursuit of horse archers is a particularly smart idea. But they, they could be able to withstand this anyway. Oh, actually, no, they won't because of the support of foot archers as well. You see here a very good example of uh, uh, um, how to say this. Um, let's say, uh, yeah. Uh, a good example of cavalry and infantry working working in concert, so all together, like in in good support of each other. 
like the the horse archers are doing the bait and the foot archers are doing some killing which is actually fairly strong even if some horse archers have been caught and cut down in melee here don't know what to expect right now because maybe some hidden unit will spring up and attack the Aperos cavalry. I want to see how this pursue ends. Uh, I think this is going to end very badly for the Aperos cavalry, also counting on these archers. Ah, here it is. The hidden cavalry unit. Of course, cataphracts. These are the elite cataphracts of Armenia. And now, Game Geek is, uh, sorry, LMT is rightfully uh, retreating because there's no other option. He can fight horse archers in hand to hand with his cavalry, but he totally cannot fight cataphracts. Hmm, let's see if he's able to route these horse archers. The Thracians are uh, a lot superior to the horse archers in melee. But will this be enough? Counting on the superiority, uh, the number superiority of these horse archers it's kinda huge at this point like the Thracians have lost so many men you see and these guys are already routing and these guys will as well just because of the overwhelming numbers there's no doubt about this Yep. this was a very cost efficient trade for Game Geek. Because he lost some men, yeah, of course. He lost the opportunity of springing an, an ambush with his cataphracts on uh, enemy heavy cavalry or enemy infantry, which are a lot more valuable targets. But he completely annihilated two Aperos. Oh, actually, he didn't. These guys are still alive. But they won't play a major role in this battle anymore, I think. Anyway, let's see what's happening in this missile duel. Cretans and Cretans, I guess. Yes, two Cretan archers. Cretan archers are slightly superior to Syrian archers. In fact, I think Game Geek is not even trying to contest the archer superiority. Or maybe he's just moving close. Yes, it seems that he moved a bit closer just to be a, a bit more efficient with his shooting. And I do think that shooting a single enemy unit is superior. And I think this is what he's doing right now. Or maybe not. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think he's shooting this Cretan unit. rather than focusing on two enemy units, as LMT is doing. But this won't be uh, extremely important in the battle. What will be probably important in the battle is this rocky formation, as I already noticed. And yeah, now we have a very broad perspective of LMT's formation. And yeah, he's using the rock as uh, a very useful uh, flank protection like he's pinning his right flank right on on this rock and he's protecting the rest of his army uh, he's revolving around the protection of this rock he's counting on this probably so he's he's taking a bit uh, more of a passive approach to this battle 
compared to the previous one where he was a bit more aggressive because the the ground was more even on the other hand he's uh, right now it, it seems that he's uh, inviting game geek to to come at him like i i won't i won't move from here i will stay here with my rock protecting my side staying safe and protected with no flanking on this side uh, on this side yes and he's placing also a unit of hoplitae haploi to protect this flank additionally which is a smart idea because phalanxes in a, uh, only phalanxes aren't really enough because of this small gap For his phalanx contingent, he has fielded four units of, um, how are they called, how are these guys called? Seems that I have Alzheimer's. It's actually very embarrassing. These are Phalangitae deuteroi. That's the name. And these are the basic phalanxes of uh, the Western successor states. I think they are slightly inferior to Pantodapoi because of their secondary short swords rather than axes, which is kind of unfortunate. And he bought four Thorakita units. This is very strong contingent of heavy infantry. I think these four Thorakitai are actually superior to these four uh, Thorakir Martikner. I think they are slightly superior because of their uh, superior stats, but I'm not really sure about this. Also, th I think their javelins are heavier, but I'm not 100% sure about this. Hoplitae Haploi are a support. The general's bodyguard, the Somatophylakes Strategu, with two units of Molossonagema. This cavalry is uh, noteworthy because they do not have the same protection as other extremely heavy cavalry from the successor states, most notably Hetairoi, which are. Uh, very, very well armored. But on the other hand, their horses are, uh, I think, of a better breed. And also the fact that the rider is lighter means that the, the horses may run for longer distance. So as a result, these guys have better stamina compared to to uh, ordinary heavy cavalry to uh, most other heavy cavalry. Uh, and it seems there's a bit of a scuffle here. An archer fight, which isn't really very important. But uh, I, I think Cretans are a valuable unit and he shouldn't have let them fight over here with almost no support. And it seems that now he's moving. And funnily enough, they are trying to pile units on, on this stupid, unimportant fight. Yeah, and this was a bit too late. Fair enough. That's a pity, because these Cretans are valuable. Are a very valuable unit. I don't know why he committed his general like this. These guys are very fairly vulnerable to missiles. 
Yep, just as you see here. Not a very good move, in my opinion. But let's see how this battle plays out. Also, there are some units back here. Cretans and another uh, Thrykyo Hippies unit. Which may be relevant for the later stages of the battle. Like for the mid game, I mean. Ah, oh, this is going to be painful. Like these arrows harassing the super heavy cavalry of the Aperos. This is very painful. Probably the Haploi should be on this flank. Like warding off the horse archers. Because uh, casualties on these units are very, very expensive. Also, these guys should be a lot closer. The... Okay, now he's moving. Um, Cretan archers do not really fear any horse archer charge. So they can run up close, like they can deploy right here and ward off any horse archer. Probably now Game Geek is just playing smart, playing playing the patient game. Why should I keep my cavalry over here? If you have those those archers there, I could just run from this flank to this flank, and harassing you and harass you on this flank because why not this was very painful one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven these are eleven Molosonagema lost out of eighty it's a lot it's really a lot what the hell what is this? What is this? What are these guys doing out of phalanx? Oh my god. Oh my god. Not really sure what his plan was. Maybe he tried to, uh, to catch the Pantodapoi out of phalanx, but this wasn't going to happen. Ah, this is a very smart tactic, to be honest. I used to do this. Like, keep some phalanxes back, some phalanxes ahead, and use one of your uh, backup infantry to flank the phalanxes at the front. Uh, this is a very dangerous game, though. Because he will be very vulnerable. This is a, an even more dangerous game for LMT because this general unit is a very valuable unit. Splat. This is actually a very good charge. Probably this one will be as well. Even if a bit of a charge through, but I think this isn't really as terrible as it could have been also considering that considering that this unit didn't route oh no no really this was absolutely painful the cataphracts got a full charge on these cavalry units This was absolutely devastating. Uh, probably half of uh, LMT's cavalry died right here. Maybe even more. This was absolutely painful. Really devastating. Now he's left with almost no cavalry. This is really, really painful. 
watch out this guy is doing. Ah, uh, two... These are two Svendonetai. Probably they are shooting at the... Yeah, at the cavalry. Not sure if they are shooting at this cavalry. Oh wow, this is... This was painful as well. Ha! <laughs> this is going to be very interesting. If Game Geek loses all his cavalry because of this. Yeah, this unit is toast. Like, in, in this battle, the infantry fight isn't really important. Like, this is just a slow ground grind out. Nothing really important is happening now. Aside from this phalanx being eaten out slowly by the Srakir Martikner. What really counts here is the uh, cavalry fight. And this is totally what's happening. Uh, this is a very unfortunate charge through, but I think Game Geek moved in time, so th this isn't really an issue anymore. And actually, this m will be a real issue. The fact that the cavalry has almost cleaned up everything that was protecting uh, LMT's rear. And now. This cavalry has free access to the rears of the units of Epeiros. And yeah, these Torakita are out. These Torakita are out. Probably these two Torakita are going to route very soon as well. Just take one of these units, just charge here without any delay to keep the uh, morale malus of the routing units. This is not an issue anymore because you ha you already have a, a superior cavalry. Like this isn't really important anymore. This is now important because Thorakitai are better than Srakir Martikner, so they're going to kill this unit very fast, and these guys aren't going to hold up in a one v one against Thorakitai. They're going to do good damage because of their axes. They're not, but they're not going to hold. So I think this is a, an unnecessary delay. Like, okay, you deal with this cavalry a bit faster, but you absolutely don't need all this cavalry to kill off these Cretans. It's a big waste of time. What you need this cavalry for is to kill off this Haploi is to kill off this phalanx is to kill off this phalanx or to kill off these these Torakitai we're experiencing a bit of lag or game freezing LMT is pulling the plug of his PC just kidding I don't think there is any way to come back from now for LMT because the game is mostly compromised. He's losing on the infantry side. He completely lost his cavalry or actually did he lose his cavalry? Uh, these guys aren't going to do anything. These aren't Lancer cavalry so they aren't going to rout any infantry quickly. So I think right now Game Geek has the game. But what do I know? I mean, I, I predicted uh, a victory in the previous game and I was wrong. So. Uh, this could be a lag spike by me. Uh, game is very jittery right now. 
very bad. What isn't clear to me is what are uh, these guys doing here? Why this fight is happening here? This I'm not sure of. Because this is like so far away from the main fight. This is very good, fairly good for LMT, by the way, of course, because the um, the Jewish spearmen are a better unit compared to the Haploi. They also have javelins, so they are more useful in supporting a phalanx fight. So this stalemate is actually very convenient for LMT. So I don't know why he charged over here while his main concern should have been at this point seems that one unit of Thorakitai has been routed while this one is still holding strong and they absolutely decimated the Srakir Martikner but there's a horde there's a horde of Actually, there's a horde of unengaged uh, Armenian infantry here. This should probably be fixed. They should be here, shooting javelins, boom, going melee route. That's how things go in the late game. Just shoot javelins, charge to engage, boom, route. Like, th that's all it takes. That's how important is stamina for morale effects. I'm not sure why this jitter in in the game, but yeah, the the game is totally compromised for the Aperos. Like I see, I think this game is over like at not even 99.9%. .9%, like this is 100% over. Yes. Very good game by both players. LMT uh, had some questionable uh, uh, decision making, but I think it was okay anyway. And Game Geek played an absolutely brutal army. Like, this army was very difficult to deal with. Uh, I think some of his choices were suboptimal. Like. The Caucasian archers, I'm not really sure what purpose they would serve in this battle. I think they did good anyway, because they tend to do good. But I'm not really sure what... Yeah, and the difference in in kills between the two players is quite stark. Because Game Geek's army was absolutely perfect to fight LMT's army. Apart from the Caucasian archers, which I, with, which I am not sure what they were for. It was okay anyway. Uh, so this was to LMT. Game two. So good game to both. And see you next game. So they're they're even right now.